Edward was born blind. However, this doesn't prevent him from orienting himself in any space. Whether closed or open, without a cane or a guide, Edward manages this with the help of a phenomenal ability. He uses echolocation to move around. To be able to confidently move across any territory, he only needs to produce a specific sound. Well, something like this, it can be regulated, made a bit higher or lower, but only a little bit, you won't hear it on the recording. After Edward makes this sound, he listens to its echo, how the sound reflects off of various surfaces. This reflected signal is an inexhaustible source of information for him. Edward says the main thing is not to be too far from the objects. The closer the better, well, two to four meters, that's the average distance. That's enough for everyday life, but about two meters is perfect. Thanks to echolocation, Edward faultlessly identifies everything around him. He can say for sure whether the object near him is big or small, stone or metal, wood or plastic. Edward can even correctly describe the dimensional characteristics of a person that he comes into contact with. Apparently, the only place this phenomenal ability fails him is modern shopping malls. That's because there are a lot of glass structures there, and they resonate in a strange way. The sound splits. I mean, I can hear the return sound signaling that there is something on my left, then it reflects off on my right, and I start thinking that the entrance is on my right when in fact it is on my left. I have to orient myself using different prompts in this case. Edward, there are three experts here, and we have all heard a lot about your phenomenal abilities. In your opinion, what phenomenal things can you do? I can orient myself with the help of the sound. That's not something phenomenal for me. It's more of a necessity. But most people around me consider it phenomenal. We would like to ask you now to go from A to B and tell us what object you come across. These objects have been placed here randomly. We ask you not to touch them. Of course. So, Edward will have to go through a mock labyrinth. You see, on his way, he'll come across objects of various materials, shapes, and dimensions. The choice of trajectory is not obvious. The objects are placed quite close to each other and really at random. Let's see if Edward will manage to avoid all the obstacles in his way and get from A to B without any assistance or tricks, using only his phenomenal ability. This is an object as well. I'll go around it. Okay. I think there is some wood here, probably. Well, not a tree, but something big. It starts somewhere here. Just a moment. Okay. I could go around it from a different side. Okay. There's no way out here. Or is there? Just a second. If I go around it like that, I've done that already. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Wait a minute. Could I pass by here? I need to think it over. The barrier tape obviously makes Edward nervous. So far, he can't find its beginning or end. The situation is obviously unusual, but to get to the end, our participant will have to alter his strategy. 
change his path or motion, or show resourcefulness. But maybe I could go around it somehow. Once again, I feel like there's something knocking around there, something like a tripod, I guess. Something really small. Well, it's almost impossible to hear. I need to think it over. Okay, something, someone. Well, you're almost there. Despite all the difficulties, Edward brilliantly coped with the test. Not only did he pass through a most unusual labyrinth, but he also defined the objects around him quite correctly. And it took him only six minutes and 20 seconds. Out of this time, he spent three minutes developing a safe way to overcome the most difficult and unusual obstacle, the barrier tape. So that's a really wonderful result. Let's find out what our experts think. We have a few questions. How do you yourself estimate your hearing? Is it better developed than other people's, or is it on the same level? Could you reproduce a tune? You'll hear it and reproduce it. Is that possible? So you have a regular good ear for music. Edward, if we give you some objects, I think you'll manage to tell a table from an armchair, right? Of course, sure. Can you define the height of the ceiling? Sure. Well, it, it's too high here, so it's... Too high? How much is that? Compared to your height, for instance, what do you think? Could you count how many of your height, how many times we must multiply your height to get to the distance to the ceiling? Okay, one time and one more time. And I guess some distance will be left. Well, there was a barrier tape here. You couldn't pass because of the tape. It's just a broad adhesive tape, something like 12 centimeters wide. It's too narrow, but it reacts to the wind. Narrow, yes, reacts right, but it's hard to define, but you could have passed under it. Well, I... What was the difficulty? I don't go under things as a rule because it's difficult. That's good. I was walking like that once and nearly fell off something. And I haven't got a cane here. And I understand there are people here and so on. But I've never done that, and I just won't do it. That's understandable. 